Well, good morning. What is he doing? You're asking. Why has he got a counter on the screen? Is he counting down the remaining days in his life or what is he doing? Or has he put on the box set of 24? Well, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here? Remember this? Okay. Well, this motherboard and laptop, this is the T450 motherboard. This has been up for 86 hours straight. I got the problem solved. And I'm going to show you what I did in this video. Keep watching. So just a quick refresher on where we were with this laptop. This is a Lenovo T450 motherboard. This is one of my own laptops. This was working fine for about two years when it started shutting down intermittently. And when it would shut down, it would then power back on, but shut down almost immediately. So that's the fault. What we've tried so far is we've looked across the board while it's powered on and just tried to touch and see if there was any terminal issues, but I couldn't find any terminal reason as to why this was shutting down. Uh, we've also checked the input section here and we found that we were measuring the correct voltages at the correct points. We were measuring 20.4 volts on the main power rail, which is here. So this would lead me to believe that the power adapter, which is plugged out at the moment, but the power adapter and this input section here is working fine. So it's from this point we're going to keep troubleshooting. Now, one thing that crossed my mind when I was thinking about this afterwards was we certainly verified that our power adapter was given 20.4 volts up to this point and that 20.4 volts was coming through the fuse, through the two MOSFETs, across the current sense resistor and onto our main power rail. But the one thing I wasn't positive about was if it were a possibility that for some reason that the power supply maybe pulled the 20 volts for a split second, causing it to switch off before then coming back on again, or possibly that one of these was triggered off for a second. So what I wanted to do at this point was to basically jump over the power adapter and these MOSFETs and inject my own 20 volts in here and see if it would respond in the same manner. So I'm going to show you what I did. So we disconnect our main Lenovo power adapter and introduce our power supply. You've seen this on many of the other videos before. So what I want to do first is connect that to ground. So we connect it to ground as such. And then we connect our red wire to our current sense resistor. Like this. And with those connected, I put 20 volts, 20.4 well, volts up on my PSU. Okay, so we've got 20.4 volts. Our black wire is connected to our ground and our red wire is connected to the other side of the current sense resistor. So what I'm doing here is I'm supplying my own 20.4 volts instead of the Lenovo power adapter. I'm also jumping the fuse and the two input MOSFETs just in case they have anything to do with it. Now the big advantage of using the power supply for something like this, as you would have seen in my video with the oh, what do you call it, the X2 pavilion, is that you can see what current is being drawn and what voltage is on the power supply at every second. And if there's any change in that, you actually see it on the front of the power supply. You don't see anything that's going on when you've plugged in the Lenovo adapter because there's no interface on that to tell you the current, the power, the voltage or anything. You just plug it in and it usually works. But what happened when I plugged this in and fed my own 20.4 volts in was exactly the same. It would shut off after a period of time and then have difficulty booting back up again and then shutting down almost immediately again. So it's nothing to do, the fault with this laptop is nothing to do with the power adapter and nothing to do with any of the components here. This rules it out for sure. So what to look at next? That's the question. Now as I thought about this further it just crossed my mind that this surely has got to be something terminal, particularly with the nature of the fault. Like, it's coming on, so there's no short or anything like that, and all of the components function when it's powered on. So they're all, every component and every sub-circuit of this board is functioning to some extent. However, after a period of time, the fault is developed. And then once that, once it shuts down initially, you power it on again, 
and it comes on for only a shorter period of time. You leave it sit and let it cool down and it works again for another you know, few minutes before repeating the same pattern. So I thought what I would do is I would take one more look across this motherboard just in case I missed anything with it. And I'm gonna bring you through that. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take you through a close-up of each of the sections of this board and see if you can spot what the fault might be and write down the number of the component just play we're gonna play a little game with this alright so what I want you to do is write down the number of the component that you think that there's a fault with this is section one I'm gonna leave this on the screen for 15 seconds and have a look and see if you can spot a fault This is the second section of the motherboard, another 15 seconds, see if you can spot the fault here. This is section 3 of the motherboard, see if you can spot it in here. This is section four of the motherboard. See if you can spot any fault here. And lastly, section five of the motherboard. 15 seconds to see if you can spot a fault here. Okay, so did we all spot which component has the damage? Well, the component that has the damage is Q169. Now, I don't know how I missed this, but actually now when you've zoomed out of the board, you can see how it is possible because all of these components are tiny. They only look big when you zoom in on them. But Q169 is down here beside the processor. So you can see it here. And it looks like there's a spill or something on this. I think when I was scanning over it the first time, I thought that maybe this was glue or something. But you can give yourself a round of applause if you got that. I took a close-up image of that with my microscope, and this is what it looks like. So as you can see, it looks like some sort of fluid damage here. Um, I'm not sure if that is part of the same thing, but... What I did was I got stuck in on it with the alcohol and the toothbrush as usual and when I cleared it off it looked like this. Okay, so as you can see there appears to be little or no solder on this. So the last step I took then was to put a proper blob of solder on this. I actually took a picture of it but, but I, I don't have it but I made the solder joint look like the other two solder joints on that there. This was very difficult to do because it's so small but I eventually just with a bit of trial and error with flux it was even difficult to get flux on it, it was so small. So I put some flux on it here, I came in with a bit of solder and just put a proper little solder joint on that. And then what I did was just connected it back, powered it on again. And having powered it on and left it for 87 hours and 56 minutes, the laptop is still working. It's staying on, it's no longer intermittently shutting off. So it was simply that small spill, which I must have done at some stage. I have no recollection of it, but uh, I must have spilled something on it at some point. But that was what was causing it to shut off. What was curious about this one is that the spill didn't stop it from turning on. But after a short period of time, it seemed to kick in. There was some thermal effect there, I think, because that was my thinking all along. Now, if we look in on the motherboard, you can see what I've done with it because I forgot to take a picture of this earlier as I mentioned. So here is Q169 from the side. Let me see if I can get it from this. It might be better if I get it from here. So Q169 is right here. So as you can see, I have cleared off the spill and I have re-soldered the joint and that's what it looks like now. 
Okay, so it's good to get that one solved anyway. That's our video for this week. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And I'll be back with something interesting next week.